Hi everyone, James Mansell here bringing you yet another video. Oh my God, you guys, today is my updated Botox look. That's right, more than two weeks have passed since the last video I did this. So the Botox has now settled. As you can see, my forehead is frozen. I won't be satisfied until my entire face is frozen. I want like Lisa Vanderpump where like my face doesn't move, but I'm talking, but the lips aren't moving. Like, of course, darling, you look fabulous. That's what I want. All right, that's the goal here. Okay, so I decided I'm gonna do a little makeup look just so you have, you know, the idea of what a face looks like when it's freshly, well not freshly, well, when it has Botox in it. You probably could just watch Drag Race All Stars to get the same effect, but still, I'm doing this. We're going on this journey together. So, let's do some makeup and talk and catch up because it's been a lot that's happened lately. So, I'm going to first glue down my brows and put the foundation base on because who cares? And I'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. My foundation is all laid on. My eyebrows are down and I actually used a new product. Yes, it is NYX's Plump Right Back. It is a primer that plumps and also has electrolytes. It's what plants crave. Supposedly it's supposed to be like plumping serum and primer, so it's gonna make my face like <clears throat> ready for the all-star stage. Alrighty, now let's get started in doing some makeup and catch up a little bit because it's been a while since I've seen y'all. A lot has happened, honestly, as y'all already you know. I've been just hustling and bustling here in Las Vegas doing shows at the Garden. So yeah, I've been back and forth from Palm Springs working on a project and I recently got back to performing and honestly, I've missed it. <laughs> I've missed performing. Like it isn't until you haven't done it for a while and you get back in the saddle and start doing it. You're like, wow, I miss seeing people and <laughs> interacting and being a goof and like wearing pretty outfits and hair. And people appreciate it, you know? Being appreciated for my beauty, I miss that. I'm using a new palette I got, and it's called Talk and Flirty by Morphe. This is how she looks. It's so hard to show without the mirror like showing everything, but that's how she looks. Oh, there you go, that's not bad. You can't see any ceiling. That is her, she's pretty. I'm just using the brown in here up top to do my eyebrow. I recently got it because I actually had to get into drag really quickly when I had no drag on me. Normally it would cause like a major panic, but like, I was actually pretty impressed with how I managed to pull everything together. Like just from years of not having a whole lot, like having to start from scratch and like figure something out. It's actually interesting to see what you can do. And not to mention like we're in like 28 seasons of Drag Race where they have everyone do that 20 minute drag challenge. We've seen the creativity that comes from that. And like a lot of that, like I, I was like channeling back in my mind, like what did they do on season four when they had to make hip padding, but they only had whatever resources were given to them. So I got creative <laughs> and I made it work. And I'm like, I found myself like falling back into like old stuff I used to do back when I started drag, like those old, old, old tricks. Like for hip padding, if I didn't have carved hip pads, I would use polyfill, which as long as you're in it for a few hours is good. Otherwise it starts to like travel and shift. And by the end of the night, it looks like you have like a giant mask coming out of your leg. <laughs> big old tumor of polyfill just on your leg. Yeah, but it does work. I found these two heart-shaped pillows at Target that I cut up and just stuffed in my back and my hips and it worked. And then for a corset, I didn't have a corset on me so I had to use duct tape, which I used a lot when I was first getting into drag. Like a lot of girls use it to keep their tights up. So I tried that and I just honestly just layered it down. So I did the waist and then I just did a layer here and a layer here. And like it kept getting gradually wider and wider just to create like hourglass like I also did a similar thing when like I had to make my own dress form I was thinking a lot of us were doing back in the day before dress forms are like relatively inexpensive now you'd have to like make your own dress form by duct taping your body cutting yourself out of it and then filling it up with whatever you could whether it be like you know flex foam or polyfill or in my case old clothes and towels really impressed myself with what I managed to like come together with to like make just the basic foundation start because as long as you have that, you could basically wear any clothes you wanted. And a friend of mine, Nate, came down from Long Beach all the way to where I was to bring me a dress that he had made for me, which I was supposed to do a fitting anyway, but like plans got moved around and thankfully, the kindness of his heart, he went out and saved the day for me and brought me a really fabulous outfit to wear, which I appreciated. Like, you can't buy friends like that. And hats off to Ernie, who was the MVP driving me everywhere to get everything I needed. But, like, I managed to, like, really luck out in, like, a lot of it. Because 
where I was, the shopping district had everything that you could possibly need for last minute drag. Not good drag, but what you could use. <laughs> like a shopping, little shop, little strip mall that had Target, Ulta, and a Ross dress for less. If you can't make something work out of that. Mind you, it was a bit slim what there was to choose from. Like finding decent tights. I never realized how hard it is to find tights. Like good tights. Every pantyhose is control top, it seems. Is that the only thing they carry anymore? Like I remember when I started drag, there was always like full pantyhose and tights and stuff. But they're so hard to find now. Or everything has a Spanx in it. Whereas like for drag, it's horrible because it compresses everything down. Like your hip padding gets compressed down. So you start to have like the boa constrictor body where like your hip dips into your like thigh and dips back out. It's a weird shape. You look like a sausage. Good old sausage link body. Oh, Joan Crawford. All right. See, let's do hairs. I think my Barbie case. Barbie and Midge. I've been trying to upgrade my setup lately because it's been dire. Like y'all saw that terrible mirror I had, the little circle one that I put like a Q-tip in there to like keep up. I actually spoiled myself and bought, well, a $50 mirror. <laughs> I didn't just cheap out into the $20 mirror. I actually invested in what I do considering like, you know, it was affecting my performance in these videos. I always feel like I'm the only one that does that. Please tell me I'm not alone in the universe where it's like you just keep going with whatever busted crap you have because you're too lazy to buy anything that's nice because you think it builds character or something. Like I make it work with whatever busted I have already. And really it's just me being lazy and not investing back in what I have. Even when it's like something that's majorly important like a makeup mirror. <laughs> Like, you should have a nice meal and not always do it over your sink. You know, let that be for washing your hands. That's a good map of where I want to go so far. The eyebrows are there, so I know where my stopping point is. Let's do contour. Dave and Buster's card that I'm never going to use again, but it's good for cutting my cheeks. Contour is on. I'm not sure how I like this electrolyte primer. It made my face feel really greasy. I usually use the Angel Veil, which I have been liking. This one is the tea. Contour is on. Let's start our eyes. But first, I just need to reset a little bit, so I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, I'm back. It is time to start doing our eyes. And I'm a little depressed, you guys, because I was cooking, I was making dinner, and I'm making a pot roast, and it did not come out good. I overcooked the meat. So I'm upset about that. It's my first time doing it, so I expected to make mistakes, but like, ugh. Now I gotta eat that. <laughs> Everything else came out great except for the goddamn meat. The most important part. Let's do some makeup. I'm actually getting ready because I'm doing a double. We're doing a two for today. So makeup video and then filming a video afterwards. I think you're gonna like the follow up to this because it's got a fun backstory that I will be getting all into when I record it because I was upset much like I am now with this pot roast situation. But also like anger is coming to me a lot easier because I'm in the process of quitting soda right now. That's right, I'm kicking the habit. I'm no longer drinking any kind of sh overly sugary drinks like Coke, Mountain Dew, Dr. Pepper, Squirt, Mango Monster. Yeah, I'm trying to kick them because I haven't been losing weight from my diet because I haven't gotten rid of soda. And that's really the reason why I continue to drink it. So I'm kicking it and turns out I'm addicted to it <laughs> because I find myself waking up in the night thinking about a Coca-Cola. I'm like, this is terrible. I've gone from fantasies about Noah Centineo to now Coca-Cola. This is where I've gotten. Terrible. And I've been drinking sparkling waters to give me, like, to trick my mind into thinking that it's soda. And it's not working. I don't know if y'all ever tried sparkling water, but it's terrible. And it tastes awful. But you know what? It's just that mental thing I gotta do to wean myself off of it. We're gonna get through this. <laughs> Is there anything y'all have recently quit? I wanna know. Like what was your 2021 new year, new me thing? Mine actually was not to quit soda. I just took that on because I felt like it. Mine was actually just to say what I'm feeling more. Because I have a tendency to like keep things inside. So if I feel like something bothers me, I should just let it be known and not be rude about it, obviously. But you know, speak your opinion more. That was mine. What was your guys's? I wanna know. And don't get down on yourself if you don't succeed. There are a lot of things I thought I can do that I wasn't, I ended up not being able to do. <laughs> like just today, like today is a whole slew of me just failing at things. Like I actually was trying to alter a polka dot dress that I had. Like y'all probably see me wear it a lot. It's one of my old breastplate dresses. It's like pink and black polka dots. 
and I wanted to alter it to make it more like scandalous and put like a cutout for my breastplate and everything and make it really an eye popper. And as I was working on it, I made that fatal cut too far where it ruined the garment where you can't sew it because you'd have to basically piece it back together and on such a bright fabric it's going to show. So I failed at that and I was really upset but you see, just said whatever. It's okay, you know, the fabric is fairly common. I'll be able to find that, and lo and behold, I found it cheaper than what I paid for it in Santee Alley on Etsy. So I ordered three more yards of it, so I'm just going to redo the dress and actually do it right this time. Because that was also partly a learning experience. It's like, don't jump into something when you don't really know how to do it. And, like, I was actually quite surprised at how I took it, because I usually get really upset, like, I get really down on myself whenever I can't do something, whenever I, like, fail at something. And I took it on a chin, and it's like, you know what, it's fine. You did the right call by just ordering new fabric and just redo the outfit because the outfit was simple. It wasn't a huge loss. You didn't really like the dress that much anyway. I'm just going to cut the crease. Y'all already know what I do. You just use some Morphe and cut a good crease in that and I'll be right back and we'll start finishing stuff up. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, we're back. The crease is all cut. So this eye makeup for the most part is done as far as shadows goes. I also did a little bit of what, also did a little bit of concealer underneath the brow as y'all already seen me do a million times just to cut that and clean it up underneath. Let's start by doing our eyeliner. One of the most crucial parts. Let's see, we gotta do under eye, let's do that. We're doing simple makeup today, like I said, it's gonna be pretty, but it's simple, because I gotta do a video after this, so I can't be like pounded on, because you can feel the makeup on your face after a certain point. And like I said, that primer is still bothering me, like I have an itch on my nose that I can feel it, like, Primer is so greasy on my face. I feel like it's in my face like a grease trap. Keeping it very natural today, or at least as natural as I can get. Let us line our lips. All right, now we're gonna use the greatest brush of all, our finger. Yes, I'm gonna use a little bit of this Morphe concealer. It is a lighter skin tone. It's not the white white. It's like the lightest of skin tones before the white. All right, so I'm gonna put a little bit on my finger, tiniest bit. You don't want to overdo it. I'm going to pat it on. Now we have to use a beautiful shade of lipstick. I'm going to use Gerard Cosmetics Rodeo Drive. My ride or die nude lip shade. I love it. Ooh, yes. Yeah. I feel like it's a good look. All right. Now, I didn't highlight at all this whole time. What am I doing? Oh, my God. Beautiful. Now, I just got to do my nose. And I think we're done. Nose and blush. Yeah. Now, as we're wrapping up, I have to say, as far as like Botox or anything goes, would I get it again? Maybe. I mean, I didn't really see a major change. Like, I guess like my forehead, you definitely can see like there's very less wrinkles, but I didn't really have that many to begin with. I kind of just did it just to try it, and I might do it again. I'll see what it looks like once it fades. That'll be the really determining factor of whether or not I ever do it again. Watch. I'll come back like next year and look at this video, and I have a full face of filler. <laughs> I'm never that far anyway. But yeah, it was a nice little thing to try out. I don't know. I honestly don't know how I feel about it just yet. Because I honestly didn't really think I needed it that much. Like, I think like I convinced myself more than I needed it than anything. But now that I got it, like, I don't know, it, really, it make a huge difference. Which, like, I kind of knew that already going into it. Like, it's not going to change your life. It's just some little fun thing to do for maintenance. Now, I just think we need blush. And I think we're done. So, let's do that. I'm going to use... Ugh, so... Do not judge me, okay? This palette has seen better days. <laughs> Summer of Love. It's been forever since she's restocked it, and you can tell because I've really burned through it. It's my favorite blush that I have. I think we're done. Oh my god, I just got to put lashes on. I actually finished my makeup, and I actually think I look really pretty. I mean, it's very simple and, like, very nude. But we're also about to do another video, so it's, it can't get too crazy. <laughs> the makeup has to be comfortable. This is my comfortable makeup. Because I found every time I have to do two videos in one day and I, like, slap on the makeup, you can feel it on your face as you're, like, sweating and stuff. And, like, a lot of times when I look at those videos and I'm editing them, I look at myself at the end of it like, whoa, good lord, why did you wear so much makeup? It's cracked. Ugh. This is where we are. I'm going to put on my lashes and my look, and I'll be right back with the final results. <laughs> Welcome back. Okay, this is the final result. This is the makeup I chosen to wear for when I decided to do my hair video, although I'm not quite sure that's going to happen now because, girl, my face is so itchy. But not like I'm breaking out with anything, but like I can feel the primer under my skin, like the plump right back. 
I don't think I like it. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. I looked it up and it's supposed to just basically absorb into the skin or you can mix it with your foundation to where it's supposed to create all day coverage. But like, I don't know, it just, it came off really greasy for me and it did not work on me. Maybe it's to do it by skin type or something, but it just, it didn't work for me. It's a no for me on the plump right back and go right back to my skin veil from NYX. So they're still getting my money. Just, you know, not for that, which is really the kicker because this one was more expensive. It was like 17 bucks. Ugh. This is the look for the video. Now, I'll see if I feel up for it, if I want to like film it, because honestly, I'm going to be like this the whole time. Like, <laughs> I'm going to have like patches of my makeup coming off. It's going to be a disaster. So I might just wake up early tomorrow and do it then. But again, I'm so glad I can get together with you guys again and talk about stuff and catch up with you because it's been a while. You know, it's been a whole five days. Or maybe even more at this point. I don't want to go that long again without you guys, okay? I missed you. And I'm glad I'm back, all right? And thankfully, my schedule is going to slow down after my birthday. So I'm excited. I'll be posting a lot more in probably late February, early March. And it'll be a more consistent schedule because something's got to give. And I want to do a lot of brand new, more fun content for the new year, you know? And just have some fun on this channel, you know? It's been a while since I've done that. So... I am going to be experimenting with you folks, and I hope you're along for this ride with me because, honestly, it's going to be fun. I'm excited about a lot of the projects I have lined up, so I think you're going to like them too. And of course, I got to take a moment, a Venmo moment, where I think everyone who's tipped me on Venmo. I would like to thank Sergio, Haley, Nicholas, and Todd. Thank you all so much for the tips on Venmo. All right, now I had so much fun catching up with you guys. I've been kind of a motor mouth today, honestly. I can't stop talking, but it's honestly because it's been so long since I've been in front of the camera talking to you folks, okay? Goodness. Heaven forbid I missed you, all right? <laughs> now, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, bye. <laughs> Click here and see me do a Coco Peru-inspired wig recreation. Or it's me do a Carrie Colby inspired wig recreation. Come on, click it. You know you want to. If you don't click it, I'll take your boyfriend Avril Lavigne style. So click it.